Hello, I'm Chris Found. I am a senior sales engineer with Zscaler. I'm here to talk to you and give an overview on the Zero Trust Exchange. So in our diagram on the left here, we have items that we want to connect from. So we've got people working from anywhere, third parties, mobile devices, branch offices. And on the right, we have things that we want to connect to. Things like the internet, our software as a service providers, things like your data center and infrastructure as a service. So your AWS, your Azure, GCP, and so on. I'm going to talk through some of the traditional ways of connecting from here to here and some of the challenges around that. And then we're going to have a quick overview of how Zscaler's Zero Trust Exchange can broker these connections in a very simple, very secure, very efficient way. So when we think about connectivity traditionally from a branch office, usually we would have something like an SD-WAN or an MPLS route from the branch through to a data center. Within that data center, we'd then have the applications that we want to access. And we'd also have a number of controls, things like firewalls, things like potentially SSL inspection. We may well be looking at sandboxing. And we would run all of our traffic through these controls and then out over to the internet challenge with this being that it's quite inefficient coming from the branch to the data center, which potentially is quite far away, and then to break out through all of these security controls chained one after the other, each adding a layer of latency to the internet. So not the most direct way to do this. So when we think about people working from anywhere, we would usually have a VPN solution for them. So we'd have a VPN concentrator, We'd have a VPN agent, and we would run connection from that device down to the data center. Two problems with this. First of which is that we are listening for an inbound connection on our VPN concentrator. If you can reach it, you can attack it. And we've seen a number of vulnerabilities come to light multiple VPN providers over the past couple of months that suggest that this is a risky way to do things. The other issue we have is that we're effectively extending our network to include this device that's not within my perimeter. I have no idea what else is on that same sort of subnet where they're working from home, in a hotel, or wherever else on, on public guest Wi-Fi around the world. So we've got the potential for lateral movement because we can jump from where that VPN lands to pretty much anywhere that the firewall allows. And we're also still gonna come back into a data center to go back up to our infrastructure as a service or over to the internet through these same controls. Again, all adding layers of latency. Traditionally, the option that some companies would take would be to split tunnel out certain traffic and send that directly but obviously you've got no controls over that traffic. You've got no visibility, et cetera. So I'm gonna take away some of this and we'll talk about how the Zero Trust Exchange can, can do this. So Zero Trust Exchange. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the client connector, which is a lightweight application onto your corporate devices. It runs on Android, iOS, Windows, Mac OS, Linux. So any user-initiated device, any user-initiated traffic, we are going to deploy that client. That client connector is then going to connect into the Zero Trust Exchange. We're going to build a tunnel up to the ZTE. So any traffic that is destined for the internet, first thing we're gonna do is SSL inspection. The reason we're gonna do that is, it's gonna allow us to then apply other controls. We're gonna be able to do sandboxing, layer seven firewall, 
we're going to be able to apply data loss prevention controls. We're going to be able to use our cloud application control suite so that you could allow users to access Gmail, for example, but block them from sending attachments or sending mail. So there's a raft of capabilities that that SSL inspection unlocks. And unlike the way that traditional uh, providers would have done this historically, we don't chain these one after the other. We're doing everything at the same time while it's in memory within the ZTE. Single scan, multi-action. So at this point, we really don't mind where that user is. They traverse directly over the internet, their closest point of presence, and then directly onto the application. When we think about branches, there are really two options. You can use your existing sort of CPE. You can build GRE or an IPsec tunnel, and you can send all of your unmanaged device traffic to us, same from the data center. Optionally, you can deploy one of our Z connectors, one of our branch connectors, which would allow for bi-directional communication through the Zero Trust Exchange to destinations within your data center and uh, your infrastructure as a service. You'll remember that we spoke about the VPN posing an attack surface. It's listening for an inbound connection. It can be attacked. The way that we architect is we use a little connector, a little lightweight virtual machine that makes an outbound connection to our cloud. So we've eliminated that attack surface. No VPN infrastructure to be patching constantly. No need to worry about things like DDoS, etc., because that's all abstracted behind the Zero Trust Exchange. So if we have a user, we can now build a tunnel within the tunnels brokered through the ZTE across to the individual application. So if you were going to go and do some threat hunting, um, some reconnaissance within an environment, and you had a compromised endpoint, you would not be able to see everything that is behind the Zero Trust Exchange, only the items that this specific user has access to. And then we're into how we solve for third parties. So we mentioned earlier about the ability to do isolation, cloud browser isolation. So effectively, we will run the web session within our cloud and we'll just stream pixels back to the user. So these guys are never directly connected to your applications. We can do this for RDP, for SSH, VNC, and web applications. And because we're taking on all of the compute here within our cloud, you no longer need to have huge farms of virtualization to do similar connectivity for unmanaged devices. Now that we've solved with these client connectors and these app connectors for all of these problems, what we can also do here is we need to integrate with other systems. We totally appreciate that we would be a core platform to your connectivity, but we also appreciate you're going to use others, people like CrowdStrike. You're going to use people like Microsoft, possibly their um, Defender for Cloud apps and for Endpoint, those sorts of things. So what we have, it's a number of integrations to best of breed that allow us to share information with them and for them to share with us. So we can consume from CrowdStrike things like the risk posture on a device, and we can build that into what applications people can use, or whether or not they're connected to things directly or through isolation. We can consume all of this information to help us do better and also share information from us around connectivity, DLP labeling and so on with these guys as well, which is great. And obviously you need some kind of scene integration and identity. It's everything that we do is underpinned by identity. Because of the way we architect, when you think about spinning up new environments, we make you very agile. So if you were to have a, a new company you purchased tomorrow that came with their own 
data center with their own applications, their own infrastructure as a service. And a new bunch of users. What we would be able to do is deploy the client connector to them. They would then be able to integrate with an identity provider, at which point you can present all of your applications to these new users. And again, all we would need to do is present a couple of app connectors within their environment that can speak to the applications you want to present. and you're able to provide that connectivity without the need to have express routes or end-to-end -end network connectivity between these environments because everything would be brokered through the ZTE. But there we go. That's the Zero Trust Exchange overview in five minutes, in about 10 minutes. Um, if you'd be interested in hearing more about how we can take this and make it applicable to your environment, simplify your estate and security, um, please reach out, let us know. Thanks very much.